thank you, God, because you are worthy, oh God. David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go in the house of the Lord this morning. Let us be, we came out this morning just to lift up the Lord, just to give him praise, Lord, just to praise him this morning, God. We just want to thank you this morning, God. We love you this morning, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, God. Father God, we just thank you this morning, God. God, we just ask you, God, to love you, God, and just bless and praise you on this morning, Lord God. That we will sing songs of God this morning, Lord God. That you will bless us, God. That you will open up our eyes and ears, God. That you open up our hearts and open up our hearts and ears, Lord God. What you're doing and what you've already done and what you're still doing, God. God, we just give you that glory and praise this morning, God. God, we ask you, God, to come in and do what you do, God. We thank you, Lord, God, this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Let us receive our praise thing this morning. Give you glory. Give you glory. Give you honor. 
if he's there.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just want to greet the people that's watching by YouTube, Facebook, or whatever, to enjoy yourself today in God's Word. Yeah. To enjoy yourself God today in God's Spirit. To you enjoy yourself today, whether you're at home, or whether you're out, or wherever you might be, but just to enjoy yourself in God. Hallelujah. Because He is the Creator. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Sometimes we might call it a mess, but guess what? He started it. Right. And his word said he is faithful and just to perform it until the end. Yeah. This stuff that God started in us, he's going to finish it. Yes, yes. All we have to do is just throw up our hands and surrender. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. So today, yes. people, yes. Hallelujah. 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 God. Just surrender your life, yes. your soul, soul, your being, everything that you have. Just to him. And he will shower you with all the blessings from above. Yeah. Amen. 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 Yeah. I hope everyone that's yeah. watching by YouTube or television or on YouTube. Yes. Wow. It's amazing. There's no God like you. Sing your song. There's no God. There's no God like you. Yes. receive our pastor. Yeah. Everybody Hallelujah. give it up for our pastor. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 It's good to be here this morning. It's a powerful day in God. First thing we want to do is wish Miss Mr. Nancy a birthday. She's 21 and holy. She said she had an awesome day in God yesterday, but we want to wish her a happy birthday and praise God for that. And anybody else that's had a birthday, if you're watching by uh, camera this morning or by uh, Facebook on the church page, wish you a happy birthday. But we want to speak to people this morning. No matter what the world is saying, God has another answer. Right. Now, how many know what I'm talking about? Amen. What God says goes before anybody says. Listen. What God says goes before the president, goes before the Congress, it goes before everything. Yeah, God yeah. is God, so God, and sometimes we they say we have to do this and we have to do that. But I'm all, all the stuff that's happened with this coronavirus or COVID-19, I still say God's in control. I still say God knows what's happening. I spoke against it. You know, uh, they say, well, you got to do the church like this, but hey. Still believe in God is the answer to everything. Now, how many know God speaks? He speaks. Yeah. Nothing happens in your life this morning if you don't speak anything. Yeah. Do you understand that? Now, we've talked about speaking the word. And we talked last week about changing our minds. But you're not going to change your mind until you speak the right things. Yeah. Do you understand that? You can, you, can, you can believe whatever you want to believe. You're not speaking the right things. Now, we've probably got people watching this morning by Facebook this morning. 
then it's going to be on YouTube, right? Okay, but, but if you're watching this morning, I don't know where you're watching from, but I want to tell you, your God has the answer, and your God is the supreme being above all things. Amen. Yes, amen. How many believe that this morning? Yes. So we, we're going to be here a while. My watch is not working right this morning, so every, I've been running 30, 40 minutes behind all morning. Just didn't realize the watch won't work anymore. But this morning, we, you know, we want to come this morning with a word. Now, the words, this is what I got this morning. This is for somebody that really wants to hear what God is saying. My words will shape my future. Right. Say it again. My words. my words. Now listen. God's already said it. But he expects me to talk like him. Amen. I'm not, listen, the reason I come this morning, I'm not, like, I'm not talking like the world. I'm telling you, I know things that happen. You, listen, you might have lost your job. You might have had a uh, job cut. Uh, you might have had, you lost your marriage. You can't figure out where your kids are. But God is still control of everything in your life, whether you believe it or not. But my words will implement what happens in my life by what he has said. And I'm tapping into him. All right. Now, so this morning, this is what I, I got this morning. Let's turn. We're going to go to Genesis. Genesis 1. Now, in Genesis 1, we know that's the first, everybody knows you. Now, that's the easiest book in the Bible to find because it's the first book. If you can't find that, we, you need to really, really do something different. <laughs> but in the beginning, if you'll notice it, now I'm going to try to hold this down. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, the face of the earth. And God, the Spirit of God, the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. But, but listen, in the first two verses, He created. But in the third verse, he spoke. Do you understand what I'm saying this morning? The whole thing changed when he started to speak. He created everything. And listen, he wants you to speak like him. If you speak like the world, you'll wind up like the world. But listen, in uh, verse 3, it said, And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. When he said something, something happened. Yeah. Listen, yeah. I'm right. telling you this morning, if you'll say something, if you say something, that's right. Not what somebody else said. That's right. Come on. Now, yes. if they're saying good stuff and saying God stuff, tap into it. But if they ain't saying God stuff, leave it alone. That's right. Amen. But that's the problem with a lot of people. They're tapping into the wrong what, what's being said. But listen to this. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. Now, then he said, I saw the light. Every two verses, almost every two verses, yes. you got yes. four and five. He sees what he's done, and then on the sixth verse, he says something again. And then he said, and he said, let there be a firmament, a, firm, a firmament in the midst of the waters and let the divide the waters from there. And then listen, he saw the firmament and then two verses later, guess what he done in verse nine? He spoke. He said something else. Now, what does the message Bible say about that this morning? Can we read the message Bible, kind of work our way through it this morning? Verse three, God spoke light and light appeared. God saw that the light was good and separated the light from dark. God named the light day and named the dark night. It was evening. It was the morning of day one. Right. Now, what, what does the uh, sixth verse say? It says, God spoke again. Listen, listen there. God spoke again. God didn't create anything. God didn't create. He stopped creating for a while. He, cre he started saying some things. Now, the reason I'm telling you that is what if you're not saying anything, in your life and you're not saying anything into listen my words will shape my future my words are controlling my future if you're speaking the wrong thing wrong things are going to happen because listen and i wrote some stuff down this list my words will shape my future and listen and my words will deplete my future which words are you speaking this morning you can come, we can say, well, we ain't going to have church no more. See, I don't believe this is, listen, I don't care what the world is saying, and I'm, I'm watching by Facebook and by YouTube this morning. You know, I don't care what the world is saying, I know what God has said about me. Amen. Now, why has God, listen, what has God said about you? All right. You got to go back to the source. Not what the world says. Because, see, the world, the world will tell you anything, and most of us lie anyway. Because they want to have control of you. Yeah. Do you understand? And they're trying to control your future. The only one who can control my future is me and God. Amen. See, a lot of people say, well, only one can control my future. God, uh, you got a part to play in it too. All right. Because you got to speak what thus saith the Lord. I'm speaking the, over this church building today. Look, if 
you look over these buildings right here, if you can see over here, I, we spoke that we won't put a roof on this building. These two buildings, just a few days here, this is finished. Now they're going to finish this. This thing will be finished out here in a few days. The reason why this is happening is because we didn't hope this. Come on, come on. I'm not hoping to be, listen, how many of you hoping to be saved? I'm not hoping to be saved. I am saved. How many of you are hoping that you have the Holy Ghost? I ain't got to hope it. I got it. All right. How many got, listen, I ain't hoping for a present. I got his present. Yeah. Yeah. Does anybody understand what I'm telling you this morning? Yeah. I have his presence to change things. I have his presence and I have his voice. I got the same voice that God's got. I got the same voice that Jesus got. When Jesus got off the cross, I got out with him. I got up with him. You understand that? I have the same power that he has. But my words will shape my future or my words will deplete my future. What are you speaking? I get around, listen, if you stay around, if you get around some people in a few minutes, you can tell where they are because you can tell by what they're speaking. You can get around some people. Listen, some people ain't gonna like this. Even by Facebook this morning. You can tell by what what by their friends where they are. You can have the wrong people you have to miss you up. Now what did verse 9 say? Verse 9 says, God spoke again. Separate water beneath heaven, gather into one place. Land appeared, and there it was. God named the land earth, and he named the pool water ocean. God saw that it was good. Listen, every, see the first two verses he created, the next verses he started speaking. Now, God is speaking to you this morning, and we're looking at this camera, and I'm speaking to this camera this morning, off on this, on this parking lot. Look, we don't, listen, we got probably 20, 20, maybe 20, 25 people. Listen, can we be real about it? Can we just be real? Some people don't want God. So we get out here and try to save the world, and there's nothing wrong with that. But listen, some people don't want to be saved. So, guess what I started doing? I just do what I, the very best I can do what I got to do with. I encourage, listen, you won't get around me unless you be encouraged. Right. Cause I, I'm trying to tell you, you ain't got to be broke. Yeah, all right. All right. You, you ain't got, listen, if you, you ain't got to be broke. Right. If you really serve God and really serve God with a whole heart and really trust God. But, but let me tell you something. God, there's more than one element in trusting God. See, we trust God. Does everybody trust God? Yeah. Well, let me ask you a question. Did God trust you? Oh. Come on now. Come on now. Come on now. That changes the whole thing this morning. You, you, everybody, listen. Everybody, even if you ain't, I know people that's not saved this morning that trust God, but they, God don't trust them. Yeah. That's why some people won't ever have anything because God can't trust them with it. Yeah. What'd you say, sis? This is plain. God don't trust this. Can I tell you something? There'll be people in heaven that God didn't trust. Right. Okay. Somebody ain't gonna like that. Now we ain't talking about salvation. We ain't talking about speaking in tongues. He just don't trust you. <laughs> <laughs> Can I tell you something? Judas walked with him. Judas talked with him. Judas eat with him, but he didn't trust him. You know that? He didn't. What do you say? Judas walked with him. You ever had anybody walk with you? Amen. Okay, Judas talked, uh, ate with you. You ever had anybody eat with you? Walk, talk. Come on now. Judas walked. Judas ate with him. Have you ever had anybody eat with you? You ever had anybody walk with you? But now the point I do is, I got to understand what happens when they talk with you and then they walk off. Do you think that was? Do you think when Jesus Jesus is sitting at a table, and that's the first time he got an inkling that he didn't trust John, uh, Judas? Come on, he didn't trust Judas from his get go. That's why he gave him the money bag. He's the very thing the man that the, that seed was inside of him. He gave him the very thing to hang him with. Yes, Jesus. Do you understand that? That's why people walk off sometimes. This some people have to walk so you can get the right talk. Some people have to walk so you can get the white right walk. You understand that? Everybody don't want the truth. 
Listen, the world is telling you everything is chaotic. Everything's going to hell. I'm telling you this morning, I'm one little sounding symbol this morning standing in a parking lot in North Carolina, in Rocky Mountain, North Carolina, standing on the parking lot, looking at people, looking at me. And listen, I'm telling you, God's in control, and God's getting ready to do something great. Amen. I'm telling you, God's getting ready to decrease some things. Listen, God's getting ready to speak again, like he did in the Bible. All I'm telling you is he, I'm, I'm forewarning, I'm a forerunner. I'm telling you he's getting ready to decrease some things over your life. Listen, he's already decreased some things, getting ready to decrease some other things. But listen, you have the power to speak like him this morning. Listen, I, listen, when somebody says, listen, they'll think you're arrogant when you say that. I can't lose. Does that sound bad? No, that's good. I'm not to tell. You're looking at the head. All right, all right. Uh, because my words will shake my future. Listen to what I say. God's words brings everything into existence, in fruition. I asked Alexa, Alexa this morning how to say, spell fruition. She didn't ever understand nothing I said. I said, Alexa, well, how do you spell fruition? She kept saying, petition. I said, well, just forget it. I, I know what I'm talking about. I finally told Alexa, just forget it. I told her 20 times, can you, Alexa, how do you spell fruition? She kept saying, petition. I said, I'm not saying petition. I'm saying fruition. That word, not, that's, that's North Carolina language. That's what that is. Yep. Is that what it is? That's okay, what that that's is. That's North Carolina now. Maybe, maybe she got it better than me, but I'm just telling you, <laughs> I need you to tell me how to spell fruition. But God brings everything into fruition. How I speak changes. Listen, you go, this is going to sound good. How I speak changes my life and also changes somebody else's life. Yeah, right. yeah. See, you could be in the crowd and everybody's speaking deaf. And next thing you know, you'll be talking deaf. I don't want nobody around me speaking deaf. I need somebody around me speaking positive. Yeah. That's why you got a roof on this place. Yeah. Somebody right. believes. Somebody sowed. Yeah. We got people in this parking lot that sowed believing that you can put a roof on it. Is it on here? Yeah. Amen. 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 Not because word. Listen, cre creative words have power. Yeah. Okay. Now let's turn our Bibles this morning to uh, Proverbs eighteen twenty one, and everybody knows that scripture. The only problem is nobody practices. Not well, I'll take that back. Some people do and some people don't. 18, uh, uh, Proverbs 18.21 says, we quote it like this. This is the way, life and death is in the power of tongue. That ain't the way it quotes in the Bible. It says death and life. Yeah. All right. death, and life. death comes, it's talking about death and life. Death and life is in the power of the tongue. Now, in verse 1 and 2, well, I'm still in Genesis. Listen, when God spoke it brought something into the now. What are you speaking right now this morning? When you got up this morning, before you ate breakfast or took a bath or brushed your teeth or gargled or spit or whatever you've done this morning, what was the first? Did you bring anything into your now this morning? All right, all right. I'm telling you, in the kingdom of God, there is a now of God. Yeah. We're speaking the now of God. What did you bring into your now this morning? How many of you are kingdom people? Yeah. How many of you are kingdom kids this morning? Listen, I ain't saying church kids. <laughs> Big difference when you say church. Everybody, we nothing wrong with being a member of a church. Ain't nothing wrong with being a church kid. But let me try to tell you something. You need to be a kingdom kid. You need to be a kingdom woman. You need to be a kingdom man. You need to be speaking positively, okay? This morning. We have the power to speak like God to bring things into our into our now. What is what is Proverbs 18? 20. Now, we always go to 18 and 21 because death and life is in the power of tongue. But we need to really back up one scripture and read uh, Proverbs 20. Amen. We need to back up and look at because we missed this scripture right here. Yes. Okay, I'm, let me see can I read it. I'm going to read it to you. Let me read it first. I'm going to find it if the wind don't blow me down. I want to read this because this is very powerful because you know what? You need to really hear what I'm getting ready to say because See, it don't take two hours to get God if you got it. Does that make sense this morning? Now let's read. Listen. Listen to verse 20. We missed this scripture. Very powerful. Really, it's just as powerful as 21. A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth. Anybody ever heard that scripture before? Yes. Okay. 
with the fruit of his mouth and with the increase of his limbs. Everybody touch your lips. What's rolling off these lips will determine what you have. All right. Did you understand? Now we ain't got to the death and life part yet. We're just talking. We're just talking about what God is saying here in the scripture. Let's read it again. This verse, God, this thing changed my life. Guess what I can do? I can talk that God. You can just not say anything that's, that's messed me up. I curse it this morning. You need to go back to God and ask God to curse it too. A man's belly shall satisfy with the fruit of his mouth, and with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. See, God wants to fill you with whatever you want to say this morning. But now we ain't talking about crazy stuff, we're talking about God stuff. And then he goes on and says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and that they love it shall eat the fruit of it. I have the power this morning to speak life, and I also, if anything comes by my dwelling that sound, looks like, smells like, talks like, looks like, walks like death, I can curse it. Come on. Somebody asked me, say, you believe you get the coronavirus? Now, some people ain't gonna like this because you're gonna get emails about it. No, I don't believe I can get it. And let me tell you something. Some of these people that say they got it, they ain't got it neither. They're looking at the check. Oh, wow. That's why the hospital's doing things. Everybody is dying. Now, we know people that's dying, die with all kinds of problems. They say they die with coronavirus. So the hospital get thirty nine thousand dollar person. Come on now, come on. Let's be real this morning. We get cards and letters, or we get somebody on Facebook. Hey, he thinks he's somebody. Let me tell you, I'm looking at you right now. If you're looking, yeah, I am somebody. Guess what? You are too. If you know who you are. Come on, come on, come on. Man. I didn't come this morning with a weak down, watered down word telling you you think you is, you maybe you is, hoping you is. One day on the other side when I get over young, I'm telling you you can have it today. In Jesus' name. What does Proverbs eighteen twenty say? By the Proverbs 18, 20 says, words satisfy the mind. Hold right there. Work, then listen. See how the, listen. Everybody, listen. How does the mind, words satisfy my mind? Last week we talk about the mind. You can't never not talk about your mind. Because right. your mind, listen. Anybody ever had any pure thoughts? Come on now. Amen. Uh -huh. Ain't nobody out here ever had an impure thought. Amen. Somebody lying. Come on. Man. First thing we do, where's the altar? We are here. Just we use this. Come on. This is the altar. Get down here. Let's lay hands on cast 10, 10 gallons of water on you. But you're lying. That's right. Amen. If somebody's watching this morning and says they ain't never had any pure thought, you lying too. Yeah. Go ahead. It says, words satisfy the mind as much as fruit does the stomach. Hold it. Much as fruit. How many How many like grapes? Right. Man, I can eat grapes till they run out of my ears. As long as they ain't got a seed in it. I don't like to do that. <laughs> Anybody like spitting seeds? I don't like it. But see, it ain't just... Listen, the same thing that satisfies your belly can satisfy your mind if you use your words right. See, listen, you need to be a warrior. You need to be smart and know how to take the word as a sword. And know how to cut and sunder to and fro. You need to how to speak to your situation. Say, okay, God, I don't understand why I'm going through this. I don't understand why this is happening or why I can't do it. But I'm going to take the word as a sword this morning, God. And I'm going to cut away what I don't need and what I need, God. What When I get through, God, what I, what's left is what I need. Come on, man. Go ahead, read, brother. It says, good talk is as gratifying as a good harvest. Listen, good talk. If I'm talking bad stuff, I ain't gonna get, I'm going to get a harvest, but it's not going to be the harvest of the Lord. Because he said when good talk is done, speaking positive, speaking, not, and I'm not talking about positive things. I'm speaking what thus saith the Lord of my life. I'm going to get a harvest. How many want a harvest this morning? Amen. Everybody's in the car saying, listen, you need a harvest this morning. Listen, you need a harvest whether you think so or not. But guess what? If you're saying the wrong thing, you're going to get a harvest, but you ain't going to like what's coming. Come on. Go ahead, brother. 21, it says, words kill. Oh, words kill? All right. See, now that's, that, now that's the message Bible talking about 1824. 1821 says death and life. And what you say now? Words kill. Go ahead. Words give life. Oh, words kill and words give life. You got to distinguish what side of the coin you're on. Amen. Yeah. 
Or just this, I'll say it this way. Whose table are you sitting at? Right. Are you sitting at your neighbor's table that's speaking death? Or are you sitting at the table with God eating life? Right. All right. Is that good to say that way? Go ahead, brother. Words kill, words give life. They either poison, hold it, right there. My words can poison my stuff. Anybody ever had poison put on flowers and they die? Anybody ever heard Roundup? Anybody ever heard 365? I got some you spray it one time a year and that's it. Okay, but listen, words have poison. I didn't come this morning to speak something poison to you. I come this morning to tell you who you are, God, that God is in control and I'm speaking life over your life. Where you you standing out before the heavens today with the sunshine, there's life being spoke over your life today. Yes. Go ahead, brother. Yes. Glory. In Jesus. Words name. give, words give life. They are either poison or fruit. You choose. Okay? You hear what the message about said? You make the choice. And listen, you ain't gonna like what I'm getting ready to say. God didn't make the choice. Yeah. All right. He said for you to make the choice. Yeah. He's already made provision. He's already made, he done done everything he's gonna do up to this point. There's nothing else that he's gonna do because he's already did it. So you choose this morning life, death or life in the power of the tongue. Amen. Okay, listen to this. My words out of my mouth will increase me or decrease me. All right. That's why a lot of times I look at stuff and I say, Lord, will that work? He says, that'll work. I said, but it looks like it's dead. He said, it is until I put my hands on it. All right. All right. All right. You're standing on a parking lot this morning. You're looking at a building. Some people say, well, it's just a building. To you it is, but you don't understand. It's purpose and destiny here. Amen. How many need purpose? Yeah. Amen. How many need destiny? Amen. Like, that's what I'm trying to tell you. Listen, we don't have a thousand people this morning. It don't take a thousand. Jesus changed the world with twelve. He had twelve hundred disciples, and most of them walked off. But when he said, "Drink my blood, eat of my body," they said he must be crazy. That twelve hundred got up, and walked off, <laughs> left him with twelve. But guess what he did? He got twelve that said, "I'm gonna stick this thing out." Are you one of the twelve? You need to point at yourself, Lord. Make me one of the twelve. All you need is 12 this morning. Yes, glory. Now, if we get 24, we're just doubling it. Oh. If we get 36, we'll take that too. Amen. If we get 48, we'll take that one too. We don't have no problem with it. But God says, if I can find 12 people this morning. Listen, you know why things happen like it is? Because the Christian didn't pray. That's right. Somebody going to get mad. Well, I prayed. I didn't say you did. I said, but when in totality of all of it, the Christian did not pray the way they should have because we could have turned this thing before it ever got far as it did. Do you believe there's power in your word? Do you believe what they say in Congress or do you believe what God said on the cross? Which road are you operating from? I'm not operating in, in the world's economy. I'm operating in God's economy. That's right. There's, a pre there's people, do you know there's people that's killed themselves yeah. over this? Yes. Yeah. There's people that's, that's dead today because I don't know why they did it. I'm not, I'm not condemning nobody. Let me tell you something. Hopefully, and I'm, I'm believing, I'm, I'm speaking life over you and myself. We won't do that. That's right. We're gonna, who, whose report we going to believe? Jesus. We're going to believe the report of Jesus. That's right. Whose report we going to believe? We're going to believe the report of the Lord. That's right. So if you're watching by camera or on Facebook this morning, on the church thing this morning. I want to speak to people right now. I'm speaking to them. Is it on, Jesse? Are people watching? They are? Okay. There's people watching today. And there's one person watching today. You're having problems. And you say, well, you ought to call them by name. No, I ain't going to call them by name. But your family is getting ready to get a whole make. Listen, it's going to be a makeover. Anybody remember the show when the lady goes, she comes out, you don't even know who she is because she doesn't have a makeover. Right. So is that the same woman went in and now she come out? That's what God's saying to some people this morning. I'm declaring today over the people this morning. I'm decreeing in uh, Psalms 1. I'm decreeing Psalms 2, uh, 1 Corinthians 16. I, listen, I'm decreeing that your life will never be the same. When God's, when church opens back up in just a few days, listen, this is only a temporary thing. Right. right. See, Jesus ain't temporary. That's right. He's, he's the measure yes. of all measures. Right. Do we understand that this morning? 
I come this morning to tell you who you are, God. I'm speaking to them this. They'll film it this morning. They'll play it back. But I want to tell you, there's people watching by Facebook this morning. I don't know where you watch from. But God is your answer. Amen. Amen. Yes, yes. Don't trust in what man say, even though there are some smart people. But there are some crazy people out there too. You're being set up for the less. I'm telling you by God, you're being set up for the more. How many believe that this morning? Let's just lift our hands this morning. Father, we thank you this morning that, that we have a powerful God this morning. Lord, I'm looking in this camera here and I'm speaking over this parking lot. And I'm, I see the Lord, there's angels stationed on this parking lot this morning. Yes, Lord, I thank you this morning that you're speaking over the camera this morning on Facebook. That people's lives will be shared. We decree it. I'm telling you, thanks for fixing the change, God. We thank you, Lord, that we get in, we're getting ready to have the more of God. Everything looked like it's down, but I'm speaking blessings this morning. I'm releasing, I'm, re I'm cursing, I'm cursing curses. Amen. I'm speaking, I'm speaking death to some people that don't know what to do, God. But I'm speaking life to them now, God, that they'll know what to do and how to speak this morning. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, how many believe this morning, everybody in this, in, on this parking lot and watching my camera this morning, you need to understand, we need to watch what we say on our word. There's kids walking around today. The reason why they, they don't believe they're anything is because the parents told them you ain't ever going to be nothing. Right. See? Right. And some people, listen, it takes years and years and years to get that mess out of your life. It, yeah. it takes a God yeah. That's right. to know God to break some things. Yeah. Almost things in your life this morning. But we come this morning in the Spirit of the Lord. How many love God this morning? Yeah. Yeah. We thank God for the praise team this morning. Yeah. I don't know what time is it. Anybody got time? 12. 12 o'clock? Well, we ain't done too bad today. We still got time to find a chicken and a drive through somewhere. <laughs> I don't know where that would be. But thank God. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lori. Come here, man. This is what the Holy Ghost said do. I'm going I'm to follow. Everybody, it's all right if I follow God, right? Yeah, I want her to come and, and pray a prayer over the people. And over the camera, the camera's watching, right, Jess? Camera's still on? Okay, I want her to come today, and I want her to release her faith over your life today. God said, let her release her faith, and let her pray, and just lift your hands now and receive over the camera and over this and for just a second. Hallelujah. Come on, glory to God. Just release your faith right now. Whatever you trust in and whatever you believe in God for, his hand is not short that it cannot save. Yes. There's nothing too hard for him to do. Oh God, hallelujah, Jesus. Oh God, we stretch our hands to you. No other help do we know, Father God. Lord God, we stand in agreement with your word. For it is spoken, hallelujah, believe God. And so shall you be established. Believe his prophets, and so shall you prosper. Hallelujah, God, in the name of Jesus. Oh God, whatever your people are hungry and thirsty for, Lord God, we trust, oh God, that you have the substance and the provision, oh God, to release right now, Father. And we touch and agree and we release it, oh God, yes. on earth. You said if two and or three should be gathered in your name, whatever we agree on and whatever we touch on, you, whatever we release on earth is released in heaven. So we release provision. Hallelujah! We release healing, oh God. We release, oh God, everything that your people need, Father. God, we even dispatch the angels now, God, to minister to your people in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we, oh God, intercede for that lost person who feel that it's hopeless and feel that I've gone too far. God, we touch and agree and stand in the gap for that soul and for that one life, Father. We stand in hope, Lord God, because you are our hope, Father God. We hope against hope this morning, for we know that nothing, hallelujah, is too hard for you to do, Jesus. And guess what? We take it by force, Father. Surely the kingdom of God suffers violence, but the violent take it by force. And we thank you for the ability 
and the power to yes. be valid yes. through Jesus yes. Christ. And this is our position. We have made a decision to be valid through Jesus Christ, his shed blood and his name. Claim your promises and stand on the word and refuse to be denied. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Wow, what a prayer. Come on, lift your hands. That's powerful right there. I, 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 I knew I heard God. Wow. Listen, also, you who are watching this morning on Facebook, and you don't know God as your, Jesus as your personal Savior this morning. And you, maybe you're in a hotel room, or maybe you, hey, maybe you're just sitting out in the yard watching, or maybe you're sitting at a, out on the balcony at a hotel room, or, or at home, or wherever you may be. I want to tell you, I want to invite you this morning to know Jesus as your personal Savior this morning, and praise God for this in Jesus this morning. Now, if you just let's just pause for a second here and give God a reverence here this morning. Just wherever you are right now, lift your hands and say, Father, in Jesus' name, I want to give my life to you this morning. I repent of my sins, God. I come before you. I thank you, Lord, that I'm able to, to know you as my personal Savior. Come into my heart, God. Forgive me for all the crazy stuff that I say and do. And God, always be with me, Lord. And this morning, God, I thank you that I accept you as my Savior, my one and only God. I thank you, Lord, this morning for that. And I give you praise and glory, God. And guess what? If you did that this morning, you're saved. Amen. In Jesus' name. Yeah. Right, come on, let's lift our hands. There's a presence right here, right now. There's a presence moving across this parking lot right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, bro. Come on. He's going to sing it just a little bit. Come on. He said he loves you. Come on. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. I love you, Jesus. I mean, I love Jesus this morning. I love you more than anything, God. I worship and adore you. Yeah. I just want to tell you. You just want to tell you. I worship and adore you. How many adore him this morning? I just want to tell you, ah. Lord, I love you more than anything. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Yeah, yeah. Just want to tell you, yeah. Lord, I You heard something Lord, that your words will shake your future. Your word is powerful. Thank you for this morning for watching this morning. We're getting ready to take the tithes and offer this morning. Hallelujah. Elder Walsh will come around and take the tithes. You got a tithe this morning.